You weren't sure you could go up to three. I, I, do you have a better sense now, just so we can? I think we're going to finish probably by 1.30, so within the next – I'm, I'm sorry, like 2.30. Um, so, yeah, essentially 20 minutes or so. In this. It's fine, Your Honor. Okay. I mean, that's your same sense, all right. Um, so we can tell you how to do Yeah. Okay. So you might want to bless the two Yeah, go ahead. You can bring the jurors in. So you described uh, June 18. You were doing a detail at the airport, Logan Airport? Yes, I worked the day shift and then I did an evening, evening detail. So you worked in the your normal detectives division during the day? Yes, I was actually at the North Attleboro PD during the day. And then uh, that evening you were doing a detail at the airport? Correct. And you received a call uh, from one of the... Uh, Supervisors of the State Police Detective Unit. Yes. And uh, as a result of that phone call, you tried to make arrangements to get coverage for your detail. Correct. And you uh, <clears throat> needed to do that so that you could go to the law firm of Rosie Gray and pick up Mr. Hernandez's cell phone. Correct. And um, you uh, were given a number by your supervisor to call as the contact there at Rosie Gray. Correct. And you spoke to an attorney named Rob Jones? Yes. Uh, by telephone? Yes. And uh, you spoke to him by phone perhaps three times? Yes. Just to keep him posted on your ETA? 
Yes, the first phone call was, uh, you know, basically setting it up, you know, as far as what time, and, uh, what time he was going to be there till uh, I explained to him that you know, I need to make some coverage. And it was probably about an hour later that I reached out to him and said, you know, I will will be there shortly. Okay. And during those phone calls, he was very friendly? Yeah, absolutely. Cordial? Very cordial, yep. Nice, you know, very uh, accommodating? Absolutely, yep. I mean, you, you told him that it'd be a while before you could get there, and he said no problem? Yes, I had asked him if he was working late, what time he was going to be working until he said no, no rush, so... And so you basically arranged with him that when you got to the Prudential Center, this is the Prudential Center where his office uh, was. Yes. And uh, you uh, arranged with him that when you got there, <clears throat> you could call up from the front security desk and he'd be there, what time are you going to be there till, and then uh, he basically explained to me when, when you come in, there's a security guard, they'll call me. Okay. So. And so uh, he came down. He did. Friendly? Yes. Courteous? Yep, shook hands. And, friendly, and friendly. Yep. He voluntarily gave you Mr. Hernandez's phone. Yes. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> I think Mr. McCauley asked you some questions about the phone being broken down or broken. Do you remember that? It was I didn't in the suggestion broken. I didn't suggest that. That's a misstatement. The phrase was broken down. Do <clears throat> you remember that? Broken down, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and by broken down, you meant that the cover of the phone was off the back and that the battery was out of the phone. Exactly. And that's what Exhibit 158 looks like now, right? A back cover, a battery, and the phone itself. Correct. And um, Mr. McCauley, I think, asked you some questions about whether it was operational at the time you received it. Yes. And it wasn't because the battery was out of it. Correct. Now, you testified that on your way to, from the airport to the Prudential Center, you had uh, stopped by a store and purchased some tinfoil. Right. A sub shop that um, I know the owners, and they just gave me some tinfoil. Okay. Uh, and uh, the reason to do that is because uh, you've been trained that in some circumstances, if you seize a cell phone, someone could be able to remotely erase it. Correct, yes. And so normally you have a uh, protective bag that's specifically designed to protect the phone from that, correct? Yes. You didn't have such a bag because you were on a detail. No, I actually I did in the past, but I used them up. So uh, on this occasion you were going to do use the, self, uh, the tin foil, which would serve essentially same. the same purpose. Correct. And once you opened the bag up and saw that it was off and didn't have a battery in it and the cover was uh, there as well, you didn't need the tinfoil, correct? Correct. Because there was no way that anyone would zap the phone. There was no signal being sent to the phone, okay. correct. correct. Now, um, this is a BlackBerry cell phone? It is, yes. Okay. Mr. Rankin asked you whether, um, because it was not operational at the time, that it couldn't get a signal, is that right? Yes. And therefore, your efforts to prevent it from being remotely accessed were unnecessary? Correct. Do you know if the phone had been tampered with before you got it? Um, but there was conversation that... Uh, you know. Without getting conversation, did you have any... Um, know if someone had already tampered with it prior to you getting it? I have no idea. No. Okay. You picked it up when? Uh, 8.37, I believe. And prior to that time, you don't know um, yeah, what, what, if anything, is. Nothing else, huh? You may step down. <laughs>
Please face the clerk and raise your right hand. Sir, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give to this court, this jury, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. Have a seat, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. Could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the jury? Yes, my name is Timothy Woods. My last name is spelled W-O-O-D-S. And are you employed, sir? Yes, I am. And how are you employed, please? I am a supervisor in the Drug Identification Unit with the Massachusetts State Police Forensic Services Group. And where is uh, your normal place of uh, duty located? Sudbury, Massachusetts. And can you tell uh, the jurors, please, prior to uh, serving with the Massachusetts uh, State Police, uh, did you attend school? Yes, I did. And could you uh, tell the jurors, please, just a little bit about uh, your educational background? I have a Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry from Hobart College and a Master of Science in Chemistry from the Rochester Institute of Technology. And when did you graduate uh, with your master's degree? The fall of 2008. And uh, after you uh, graduated with a master's degree, did you have some employment? Yes, I did. And could you tell us what that is, please? I worked in the private sector for a uh, company, Toxicon, which did uh, medical device testing. And what type of work did you do there? Uh, looked at uh, preclinical medical devices using the same analytical techniques that I uh, use in my current capacity. And uh, when did you start uh, work with uh, Massachusetts State Police? August of 2010. And uh, have you been there since? Yes, I have. And uh, what is your current duty and responsibility, please? Uh, my current duties are to supervise other analysts as they conduct analysis and to conduct analysis myself uh, on case samples that are submitted for the presence or absence of controlled substances and to either uh, review or generate reports based on these findings. And specifically, um, do you follow normal procedures in the uh, circumstances where you are evaluating substances for the possibility of the presence of marijuana? Yes, we have numerous approved protocols that detail how to test the different types of substances that we see, uh, such as powders, capsules or tablets, or vegetable matter. And is it important to sort of have some idea which protocol you're going to follow before you um, it begin analyzing a particular substance? Yes, and again, the, the protocol that you follow would be dictated by the type of substance. And uh, that duty, the duty of analyzing substances, that's the responsibility of the drug identification unit as you've described? That's correct. <clears throat> now. Could you tell us, please, uh, the normal protocol that you follow um, in evaluating substances for uh, the presence or absence of marijuana? Yes, there is a specific protocol um, for the analysis of marijuana, and I believe that's what the protocol, in fact, is called. And could you describe that to us, please? Yes, there are four elements of analysis that we follow for an exhibit that is suspected of containing marijuana. The first is a visual examination where I'm just looking at the material and seeing if it's consistent with a, um, a vegetative material. The second is an olfactory examination or a smell test. Uh, marijuana has a characteristic uh, pungent odor that's associated with it. The third test is a microscopic examination where I'm actually taking a small piece of the sample and looking at it under a microscope, looking for a, a botanical feature called a systolithic hair which is characteristic of marijuana. It looks like a bear claw. And the fourth test is a modified Ducanoi Levine test, which is a color test. Um, and that is uh, looking for a color change on, a, on another piece of sample that is tested. The culmination of all those tests, if all the tests are in fact positive, would be a finding of that item um, was found to contain marijuana. Now, just with regards to the uh, uh, last test that you described, the Ducanois test, could you describe for us please specifically after you've looked at the item uh, under the microscope, what specifically you do? Yes. A uh, piece of sample is uh, emerged in Ducanois reagent and allowed to extract for several seconds. 
uh, an equal amount of concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to that sample. And this is the uh, first step of the test. Um, a positive react or positive result is indicated by a purple color change. The next step is to add um, methylene chloride uh, to the solution, which forms two layers and in the test tube that the, the test is actually being conducted in. And a positive result is indicated by the purple color extracting into the methylene chloride layer. Now, when you first described that um, uh, in the first step, there is the, uh, a, if it's positive, there's a purple color. Could you describe to the jurors chemically what's happening that's causing that purple color to appear, please? Um, yes, the, the chemistry behind the test actually isn't fully understood. Um, but basically, what's happening is uh, a sample that has marijuana um, contains a series of compounds. They're called cannabinoids. Um, one of these cannabinoids is, is more familiar, um, tetrahydrocannabinol. So what's happening in this test basically is that these cannabinoids are reacting with the reagents and then this reaction is causing a color change. And uh, that reaction uh, that um, is then created, you described a second step. In what is the uh, purpose of then the second step in that uh, last test? The, so the reaction is actually occurring in the, the first step. The second step, um, when methylene chloride is added uh, and that color extracts into the methylene chloride layer, uh, there are other types of substances that can potentially cause a positive reaction, um, particularly in that first step. The second step is added um, because it's more specific to cannabinoids. And you described then that if each of the four steps of um, the protocol are positive, then that is a positive determination for marijuana. Is that correct? That's correct. And each of those four steps has to be positive. Now, if I may approach, Your Honor. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, Exhibit 94C and exhibit number 95. Do you recognize uh, those two exhibits? Uh, yes, exhibit number 95 um, bears the laboratory case number 13 11925. It's the barcode in the upper left hand corner. This is a unique uh, an out number that's assigned to a case for the forensic services group. It bears my initials and a date on the heat seal. Um, it also bears my initials, the lab number, and the date on the interior packaging. And specifically with regards to exhibit number 95, um, there's inside another uh, plastic bag with the same number 13-11925 and then a number on it. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, do you recognize, and that's in a, a glassine package inside of the plastic bag. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you recognize what's depicted or what is present there? Yes, that is the vegetable matter that I removed from a uh, cigarette that I examined. And when did you do that, please, sir? On June 20th of 2013. And now with reference to exhibit number 94C, do you recognize that particular item? This appears to be consistent with the cigarette that I examined. And um, you weren't present when uh, this item was picked up, is that correct? That's correct. It's transmitted to you in that uh, brown paper bag, is that true? That's correct. And you remove it from there, is that correct? That's correct. And this item, 94C, is same in appearance as what you removed and then took out the smaller uh, contents in that glassing package. Is that correct? That's correct. And could you tell us, please, sir, the, did you follow a particular method when you removed the contents in uh, exhibit number 95 from the item 94C? Yes, this is uh, the, the method that I followed is one that's followed when uh, additional testing beyond 
controlled substance identification is requested for an item. In this case, um, DNA testing was requested. Um, so I uh, took appropriate uh, means to sterilely remove the casing, wearing uh, sterile gloves, using sterile instruments, um, and using a face mask and a lab coat. And um, <clears throat> how did you remove the items in exhibit number, or the vegetable material in exhibit number 95 from item number nine, uh, in exhibit 94C? Uh, using a sterile scalpel, I uh, cut one side of the cigarette butt casing open and then was able to remove the vegetable matter that was contained within that casing. And when you removed the casing, did you do something with it? Yes, I uh, in packaged that casing in a new container. And I'm going to show you, if I could please, two photographs. Do you recognize what's depicted in these two photographs? Yes, I do. What's depicted in those two photographs, please? This is the uh, manila envelope that I placed the cigarette butt uh, casing in that I removed. It bears the same uh, unique lab number, 13-11925. There's my initials and then, again, uh, the date, June 20th, 2013, when I conducted the analysis. The rear of the envelope um, has a piece of evidence tape that I also initialed uh, with the same date when I packaged this item. And these two photographs, did they show um, the envelope after the casing, which is essentially the paper, the wrapping of the, the item in 94C, is that correct? That's correct. Did these two photographs show after they were placed in, the paper was placed in the manila envelope and sealed by you? That's correct. What are to these is the next two, our next No judges. No judges. The uh, front of the envelope, is that correct, sir? That's correct. This is the back. That's correct. We replace that uh, manila envelope into a heat sealed bag or just in the envelope, is that correct? Uh, placed the wrapper into the envelope and then that envelope was placed in a uh, brown paper bag and additionally sealed. Now, after you remove the contents from uh, the item in Exhibit 94C, did you then analyze the contents in accordance with this four-step uh, protocol that you've described to the jurors? That's correct. And could you tell the jurors, please, the uh, results of that analysis? Yes. The results of the four tests that I previously discussed were all positive. And as a result of uh, all of those tests being positive, did you uh, form an opinion as to the uh, contents of uh, the inside of that item in Exhibit 94C? Yes, my opinion was that the contents of the cigarette uh, were found to contain marijuana. Now, we have uh, also later given uh, some additional items for testing. Yes, I was. Show you these items. You recognize these two items? Yes, I do. And could you describe, please, uh, for the jurors, what are those two items? Yes, these are two items that I analyzed on October 16th of 2014. Uh, the first one, item one, is a pink bowl. The second one, item two, is a digital scale. Now, that's, those two items, uh, when you analyzed them, they were out, uh, taken out of the, were, were not present in the heat sealed bag, is that correct? Correct. They were submitted in the brown paper bag that is there at 2 currently. 
and <clears throat> after you uh, concluded your analysis, you put them into a heat sealed bag and sealed it yourself. Is that correct? That's correct. And when you put the two items back in there, did you um, put an, uh, an additional uh, uh, plastic bag uh, with the two items that were provided to you for analysis? Yes, each item is contained in an individual bag. Uh, but there's also an additional plastic bag containing uh, smaller vials, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you made the contents of those vials and kept them all together in this heat sealed bag, is that true? That's correct. Um, I'm going to offer this as the next exhibit. You want to do it both together or? Uh, just as one exhibit. No objection. Just one. Okay. Maybe not. You're right. Thank you. You removed the uh, two items from the paper bag. Did you examine them, sir? Yes, I did. And could you tell the jurors, please, uh, what you observed when you examined the two items? Yes, it appeared that both items had a green residue on them. Um, and again, uh, we have a unique protocol for testing samples uh, where a residue is observed, and I followed that protocol. And when you say residue, uh, our protocol uh, when residue is observed, is that different than the four-step protocol that you previously described for examining the contents of uh, uh, marijuana cigarette? That's correct. And could you describe uh, what the protocol or the steps that you followed in order to analyze the residue from the two items, please? Yes. I first uh, visually examined the items and uh, noted their general appearance. Uh, there are two types of testing that are conducted with residues. The first is a screening test, which is designed to um, indicate what the residue may be. Um, I used two screening tests um, for each of these items. The first is called ultraviolet visible spectrophotometry, known as UV. And the second test is gas chromatography coupled with a flame ionization detector, known as GCFID. Uh, after I conducted both of these screening tests, I conducted a confirmatory test, uh, which is gas chromatography mass spectrometry, known as GCMS. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in order to conduct these tests, uh, do you have to do something uh, that produces those small vials now in that uh, uh, item of evidence? Yes. For uh, the screening test, I took a sterile cotton swab, uh, a Q-tip, basically, um, immersed that in a uh, control sample to ensure that the swab was in fact sterile and then swabbed a portion um, of the pink bowl and of the digital scale and then I uh, immersed that, sw that swab in a separate solution to extract any material that was adhered to the swab. Um, that, that solution uh, was then what, which, what was analyzed with the UV test and the GC FID test. For the other test, the gas chromatography mass spectrometry, again, another sterile cotton swab was taken. It was uh, placed in a control solution. Uh, a separate area of each item was then swabbed, um, and that swab was again placed in a solution to extract off any material that was adhered to the swab, and then a portion of that solution uh, was tested. So what is retained in the case is the uh, solutions that were used for both the screening test and the confirmatory test, so two solutions per item. And can you tell the jurors, please, you did that separately, the scale, and separately the bowl, is that correct? That's correct. And could you tell the jurors, please, what the results of each step of the testing was? Yes. Uh, starting with the bowl, which is uh, item one, the uh, results of the UV test were inconclusive. The results of the GC FID test indicated THC, and the results of uh, the gas chromatography of mass spectrometry, the GCMS, um, confirmed the presence of uh, THC. Now, when you say that the uh, the ultraviolet test was inconclusive, what is the ultraviolet test, please? Uh, the ultraviolet test is uh, 
screening a uh, aliquot of a liquid sample, um, different types of compounds or substances have specific absorbances in the UV region. So this test is basically shining a UV light through the sample. The light that is uh, transmitted through the sample is then read by a detector. And that information uh, allows us to possibly uh, presumptively identify uh, a controlled substance or a substance that may be present in the sample. And is there something about that particular test in relationship to uh, residue that yielded, in this case, an inconclusive result? Yes, based on the amount of residue present or uh, the composition of the residue that can often interfere with the test. Now, ultimately you do uh, the confirmatory test as you've described it is a, a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, is that correct? That's correct. And what does that particular test do, please? This is a, uh, it's an analytical technique uh, which accomplishes two things. The gas chromatography part of the test takes a a, a mixture and separates it into individual components. Um, and the mass spectrometer part uh, fragments each of those components. When a particular uh, substance or molecule fragments, it fragments in a reproducible way, um, like a fingerprint. And that test allows us to identify each of the separated components. And uh, um, the results when you do that on your sample, do you compare them to a known um, a sample of of uh, THC? Yes, any substances that are identified with the GCMS test, a, uh, a known standard is run to confirm that result. And so in this particular case, as a result of the tests that you performed on the residue in the uh, pink bowl, uh, did you form an opinion whether or not uh, marijuana was present? Yes, I did. And could you tell the jurors, please, what that opinion was? Yes, based on my analysis of the item one, I determined that it contained a residue of marijuana. And with regards to the results uh, in analyzing the residue on the scale, could you tell us what the results were? Based on the results of the analysis on the scale, uh, I identified uh, no controlled substances. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Woods. Good afternoon, sir. You're a, a chemist, right? That's correct. You're, you have an undergraduate uh, degree in chemistry, right? Yes, and a graduate degree. And a graduate, well, it's getting there. And a master's degree in chemistry, right? That's correct. OK. Uh, and you worked for the Mass State Police Crime Lab. That's correct. OK. Um, you're not a trooper or a sergeant or a lieutenant or any of those things, right? No, I'm a civilian employee. Okay. You're a civilian who works there, right? That's correct. So, so am, am I correct that there are uh, some uh, people with uh, ranks like troopers and sergeants and lieutenants who work for the mass crime lab? That's correct. And in addition, there are some civilians like yourself who work for the mass uh, state crime lab, right? That's correct. Okay. Now, with respect to the, uh, the marijuana cigarette, remember your testimony about that? Yes. Okay. And am I correct that basically you told us there were four different tests that you did uh, on that item? You looked at it, you smelled it, you looked at it through a microscope, and you put some chemicals on it to see if it turned purple? That's correct. OK. And uh, it was marijuana, right? Yes, the results of the testing were marijuana. OK. And um, uh, I assume in the course of your work uh, as a, a, a drug analyst, uh, civilian drug analyst at the state crime lab, you've seen plenty of marijuana cigarettes before, right? That's correct. OK. And can you just? Uh, 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 it's uh, the, the one that, that was introduced into evidence, it's no longer together as a marijuana cigarette, right? That's correct. Okay. Can you just explain to the, to the members of the jury uh, just what did it look like? How was it put together uh, when you analyzed it, please? Yes. When I looked at it, there was a, uh, a core of vegetable matter, and that was wrapped in uh, the casing of the, of the cigarette itself. All right, and when you say casing, is that 
kind of like um, rolling paper? Rolling paper, wrapper, yes. Okay. And um, so it was basically uh, some marijuana uh, leaves inside of a rolling paper. Is that pretty much what you were looking at? That's correct. Okay. And you told us that you used uh, sterile equipment when you did your analysis of that marijuana cigarette, right? That's correct. Okay. And you told us that um, the reason that you did that was that you understood that there was going to be some other testing, including DNA testing, performed on that item, right? That's correct. Okay. And as a trained, experienced chemist, you were aware, were you not, that DNA is something that can transfer readily from one surface to another. That's correct. And you didn't want your DNA uh, ending up on that uh, cigarette, right? That's correct. Okay. So you took precautions to make sure that didn't happen, right? Yes. Okay. And now let's just turn for a minute to the other items that you analyzed. You analyzed, uh, uh, they're both in evidence together, a single exhibit, 160. This pink, pink bowl, right? Yes. And this digital scale. Yes. Okay. And can I show you can do that, please? Yes. As an experienced chemist, uh, can you just give us, uh, please, just an, an estimate of what? Uh, let me ask you this first. You, you found marijuana residue uh, in that pink bowl, right? That's correct. Okay. And as, as an experienced chemist, just give us uh, an estimate, please, of what quantity uh, in weight uh, of marijuana do you think would, could fit into that bowl? Five jets. If you can do it. Uh, um, at least several grams. At least several grams? Yes. How about uh, several ounces? Is that fair to say? Um, I, based on my experience, I would say no more than an ounce. You'd say that no more than an ounce of marijuana could fit into that hole? Is that your testimony, Mr. Woods? Visually examining the item, <coughs> yes, I would say at, at least one ounce could fit in the bowl. And the scale that you analyzed, uh, uh, you've done analysis in uh, drug cases, right? That's correct. And uh, have you uh, analyzed digital scales uh, in connection with uh, uh, a number of drug cases that you've uh, done work in, sir? That's correct. Okay. And are digital scales, uh, in your experience, uh, often used by individuals uh, weighing marijuana, for example? If you know. Based on... Based on my training and experience, yes. Thank you, sir. Nothing further, thank you. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I have some matters that I need to deal with uh, with counsel at this time, which may take a little while before we uh, have uh, the next witness, so we're going to stop early today. Uh, we've arranged um, uh, and we'll resume tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Um, please keep your minds suspended. Don't discuss the case among yourselves or with anyone else. Continue to avoid anything at all that there could be about this case or Mr. Hernandez in any newspaper, or television, or any other form of media, including social media, Facebook, or Twitter, or anywhere else. Uh, please continue to avoid speaking or emailing to
texting or otherwise uh, communicating in any fashion with anyone, including each other, uh, about this case or Mr. Hernandez. And if anyone starts any type of communication with you uh, about your jury service or the case or Mr. Hernandez, please end it immediately. Uh, do not do any research about the case, Mr. Hernandez, or anything you think could be relevant in any way to the case. Um, I do expect that tomorrow we will be going a full day. Uh, see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.